You know, we're in our series called All In. And when we think about All In, we talk, talked about our relationship with Christ and we talked about how we can honor God. But today we're going to talk about as a child of God, as a Christian, how can we go all in with our faith and with our evangelism? See, I truly believe going all in is very important not only to you, but also to those that are around you, to your co-workers and to your family. Going all in is not about you. It's about those that you represent. And who we represent is Christ. The scripture that we used last week, and it's our theme for the month, is Luke chapter 9, verse 23. And it says, And he said to them all, If anyone de desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up thy cross, and follow me. The three points from last week was we need to deny, deny ourselves. We need to die to ourselves, and we need to devote ourselves to Christ. Being all in is one of the hardest things you'll ever do. Because being all in means not my way, but your way. And when we talk about being all in in the church, it's sometimes very difficult. My first church that I worked in, there was a sign my first Sunday that I came there. There was a sign on the front door that said, men wear ties, ladies don't wear jeans, and no shorts allowed. I thought, Wow. So this has become a place where only Christians can come to church. But if you're not like us or dress like us or act like us, then you're not allowed to be in our church. And it fought for five years to get rid of that whole mindset. And I could not get rid of that mindset. And the church, that church had become a church only designed to reach other Christians that are like them. The baptismal tank was dead. There was no baptisms. There was nothing going on in that church because nobody would come to church to be like us because sinners are supposed to do what? Sin. Christians are supposed to be a light in a sin-filled world. But if we alienate all unbelievers to be in the church, what we have done is said, we are better than you, but what we must do is we must get down on their level, not in their sin, but in their life. If we are not as all in believers of Jesus Christ, what we must do is we must say, there are people around us that need what we have, not just in the church house, but in every place. See, all in is an action. It is a spirit, a heart, and it's a mindset. A mindset that says, you know what? Sometimes it's not what I want to do, it's what you need to do. There's a wonderful scripture that Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians. He talked about being all in. Talked about not my way, but your way. Not what I want, but what you need. And Paul is going to give us an illustration today with three simple points. Found in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19 through 23. Now, I usually read out of the New King James Version, and I apologize that I'm going to read out of the Message Bible today, because the Message Bible ends wonderfully on what I want to communicate today. It says in verses 19 through 23, even though I am free of the demands and expectations of everyone, I have voluntarily became a servant to, to any and all in order to reach a wide range of people. Religious, non-religious, meticulous, moralists, loose living, immorality, and defenders of demoralized. Whoever I didn't take on their way of life, I kept my bearing in Christ. But I entered their world and tried to experience things from their point of view. I've become just about every sort of servant there is in my attempts to lead those I met into God's saving life. I did all this because of this message. I didn't just want to talk about it. I wanted to be in on it. He's saying, I'm a Jew, but I'm a converted Jew. And I am not like them because I am full of grace. But I understand that they need something. They need what I have. Not me but who I represent, and I represent the kingdom of God. So that means 
I am going to do whatever it takes to get involved in somebody's life. And I shared this with the deacon board and the staff during our Christmas party. And I hope this doesn't offend us, but this is our church. And this is the motto that we have to have. Our church needs to win people for Jesus Christ at all costs. I'm a biblicist, which means I believe the holy word of God is absolute true without error. But the other side of that is this. I do not have a right to add to the word of God. Understand that? My preferences do not overshadow what the Bible says. Just because I like something or I don't like something doesn't change. If the Bible doesn't say it, I don't have the right to preach it. Amen? But if the Bible says it, I have all authority as the pastor to communicate the truth of the Word of God. Whether you enjoy it, whether you like it, whether you think I'm stupid or not, the Bible says this is it. I have no say in the matter of saying this is it. But where the churches have failed in the past is they put their preferences above biblical conviction and people do not live up to preferences because the first thing they say is, where's that in the Bible? Well, I, um, it's not really in the Bible. It's just what I believe. And people are running from the lack of authenticity of truth of the Word of God. Because preferences are just my opinions about life. You have your preferences. I do not share some of your preferences. How many of you like spinach? I think you're stupid. <laughs> I think you're ignorant. If a spinach is on my plate, I'm not eating anything on my plate. So if that's my preference, I can say to you, I do not like you because you like spinach. How stupid would that be? Because you wear shorts in church or because you play your guitar with no shoes on, okay? <laughs> it doesn't change the fact that you're a child of God. And I've got to love you whether we agree on our preferences or not. But what we must agree on is the biblical mandate that Jesus Christ has given to us, and we must go all in on the truth of Jesus Christ. Not on your preferences, not on my preferences, but what does the Bible say? We must go everywhere, do anything, pay any price, endure the cost to make the sacrifice to reach people for Jesus Christ. We have to do that. The churches are dying. Because our churches have become places for Christians instead of a hospital for sinners. And the greatest joy that we have and the greatest mindset that we need to have is we need to invite people that absolutely need a relationship with Jesus Christ. I know people join our church from other churches. And that's great because I'm going to say people leave our church to go other churches. So it all, it's all a juggling act. But what changes people's lives are not somebody that comes to our church from another church. It's when you invite somebody that is in need of Jesus Christ and they're struggling in their life, their marriage is falling apart and their, mar and their life is just in the pits and they come to church and God radically changes them. You know what they're not doing? They're not looking for another church. They need a Christ-centered body of believers that's going to lift them up. That's going to care for them. L great. Yeah, they, they may have tattoos all over their body. They may have piercings in every place that you can have piercings. It doesn't change the fact. Just because it's not my preference to have tattoos and piercing doesn't mean that they're not able to be a follower of Jesus Christ. We must be able to love them unconditionally. That's why some of us don't go all in. Some of us are so blinded with our preferences that we cannot separate conviction from preferences. And sometimes our preferences become the highest priority within our life. Even if somebody said, this is what the Bible says, you'd say, I don't care what the Bible says. Because this is what I believe. This is what I was taught. This is what I understand. And we could say no to what the Word of God says because I'm so convicted with my preferences. We say no to the very thing that God wants us to do. And here's our issue. How do we get rid of our preferences? Is sometimes we have to look at people at face value. We have to have that empathy for people that are struggling. 
We cannot be up there and they down here. We act like they're nothing and we are somebody great. What we must do, as Paul said, I must become to all people. I must be able to lower myself to minister to anybody that's hurting. I must to use my past and use my issues and use my failures to point people to Christ because we all have issues. And in our issues, we must say, I can use who I am. We have, I'm not going to have you raise your hand, but we have all kinds of former alcoholics in this church. Believe me, I know. We have former drug addicts in this church. We have men and women that struggle with pornography in this church. And God has worked in your life. And God has radically changed some of those things within your life. And we also have people that are alcoholics, that are drug abusers, that are addicted to pornography. And what we must do is we must say, well, you are a sinner. You can't come into the church. What we must say is, I have people within the church that can walk right alongside you and help you through your issues. But if we become church and we become so pious in our mindset and the church says, you know what, we are all put together perfectly, wonderfully made, and we have no sin within our church, those people that need Jesus Christ, they'll walk in our doors and they'll see the piety of Glenville and they'll walk out those doors and never experience the power of Jesus Christ. But if we could honestly say, my preferences are not the problem, my conviction with Jesus Christ is the problem. And somebody walks in those doors and we know that they are struggling. They come to church and they come to the altar and they struggle with certain issues. And I can say, you know what? I know that you're struggling here, but I know somebody that's struggling just like you. And they've, they've overcome their issue. Can I introduce you to them? And can you meet with them? And can you do a group with them? And you know what? People that are struggling, they want one thing. They want to be able to be honest and authentic. They don't want to live a piety life. They want to live a genuine life. See, because unbelievers, they don't understand piety. They don't understand our Christianese. They don't understand our Christian vocabulary. What they know is that they're a sinner. They know that they're blind, and they know that they're struggling, and they need Jesus. They know that they don't want to wake up in the morning. They know that their marriage is falling apart and their life is in shambles. And they walk through these doors because you invited them. And you're sitting there and you're praying for them. And the last thing that you want is piety. The last thing they need is piety. What they really need is Jesus. You know, because the church ought to be like a riding stable. I saw this on the internet. And it says, horse riding stables. If you are fast, we have fast horses for you. If you are slow, we have slow horses for you. If you are small, we have small horses for you. If you are big, we have big horses for you. If you've never ridden a horse, we have horses that have never been ridden before. <laughs> and our church ought to be that same way. When somebody walks in those doors if we have to create whatever we need to create to minister to somebody, we must say, I want you to ride our horse. In our church, what we have to say is, I want you to come into this church because what we have is not what I have. What we have is the power of Jesus Christ that can transform your life because he died on the cross for your sins. And he changed my life. He radically changed who I was. And what I want to do is I want to go all in. And folks, before I get to the three points, I want you to think about your preferences. Because we all have them. I, I have two boys. And I really don't care about my boys having piercing and tattoos. I really don't want them to have it. But you know what? That's my preference. If my boy came home from college and he had an earring and he had a tattoo on his arm, I would not say, you can't come into my house. I would say, what in the world are you doing, you stupid idiot? <laughs> but you know what? My dinner table would still be there for him. And his bedroom would still be downstairs. And I would still love him. My preference is, no, 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 no. I will write you out of my will. <laughs> but, I still love you unconditionally. And sometimes in our church, sometimes we need to say, this is what I like, but this is the bigger point. So 
Let me give you three points. To go all in, we have to give it all up. To go all in, we have to give it all up. We have to give up our preferences. Give up our preferences. In verse 20 it says, And to the Jews I became to a Jew, that I might win Jews for those who are under the law as under the law, that I might win those who are under the law. In other words, I am a saved believer in Jesus Christ. I do not have to hold on to the religious customs of the day. I don't have to sacrifice sheep. I don't have to not eat pork. I don't have to not pick up sticks. I can do whatever I want to do because I'm full of grace. But if I am around a Jew that sacrifices, that does not eat pork, that cannot do anything on the Sabbath, when I'm around there, what I'm going to do, I am going to be like them, although I don't have to be like them, in order to win them for the cause of Jesus Christ. I don't want to be a stumbling block. Just because I can doesn't mean I should. And just because I could doesn't mean I will. But I have to look at them and say this. My job is not to hold up to what I have to do. My job is I want to look at others and give them an opportunity to follow after Jesus Christ. And if I become a stumbling block to a Jew that cannot do the things that I can do because I'm under grace, I have become a stumbling block. But on the other side of that, if I am, if I am with a non-Jew, what I can tell them is I need to be honest with you, and this is what the Bible says. This is what God wants for our life. Paul said, I am willing to do whatever it takes to bring somebody to Jesus Christ. I'm willing to cross any boundaries other than sin to point people to Christ. There's a difference between preference and conviction. And Paul never left his conviction. What he believed to be true through the word of God, he never left his conviction. And we should never leave our convictions. But what we must do is always remember, sometimes our preferences intertwine with our conviction. And sometimes it's very difficult to understand. What is the difference between my preference and my conviction? And if you've been to church for a long time, here's what sometimes people say. Well, my pastor taught me. This is what I've always heard in the church. And just because a pastor said something doesn't mean it to be true. What means it to be true is that's what the Bible says. Just because a pastor says you can't wear shorts into the church... But yet that pastor weighs 350 pounds. He doesn't agree with gluttony, but he agrees with modesty. What we must do is, what does the Bible say? And just because somebody tells you what you should do, you should always baptize that with the Word of God. And somebody says, this is what I believe, or this is what you believe, which is great. You can believe whatever you want to believe. You can have any preference you want to have. But before you can throw your preferences on individuals, you have to have the mandate of the Word of God to back up your preferences. It's kind of like food, or even better, style of music. Uh oh, I'm going to step on some toes, aren't I? <laughs> style of music. I don't care what the style of music is. I don't care if it's country. I don't care if it's contemporary. I don't care if it's traditional. What I care about is the content within that music. If the content within that music glorifies Jesus, if that content within that music talks about Jesus Christ being crucified, dying on the cross, raised again to give us freedom from our sin, to give us hope in eternity, I could care less. The st I'll even listen to rap music sometimes. If that music glorifies Christ. Because let me tell you something, and you know this, our kids do not listen to the same style of music that you listen to. And if we force our kids to listen to Johnny Cash or Elvis Presley, no, nah, that ain't going to happen. And what happens, even in the style of worship, our church becomes obsolete to a generation that comes in and they say this, we have to sing that style, we have to do that, in order to come to church. And what happens, kids do not 
worship the way that we worship. Sometimes they're more illustrative. Sometimes they raise their hands and sometimes they fall on their knees and sometimes they pray. Sometimes they sit and wonder. And we sit over there and say, why can't they sing the song that we like? And they're saying, why can't they sing the songs that we like? And what happens, we then become a multi-generational church that lives in our preferences instead of lives in our convictions. And we as a church will say, this is the only style of music or this is the only style of music. And what we're saying is, your preference is more important than my preference. And if my preference isn't right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my ball and go home. And that's not the right mindset either. Rather than building bridges and breaking down barriers, sometimes the church does this. We break our bridges and we build our walls. We want to protect the church. We want to protect those that go to this church. And we don't need to protect this church. The gates of hell cannot prevail against this church. What we must do is proclaim the truth of the Word of God, get rid of our preferences and stand in our convictions. We need to sacrifice what we desire in order to hold on to what God desires. Our preferences. We all have them. There's 20 different preferences on any different topic that you bring in. Do you like spinach? Just because you like spinach and I don't like spinach doesn't mean we can't be friends. Just because you don't like something that I like doesn't mean that we can't come to church together and we can't love each other, we can't worship each other. What we must do is we need to quit being immature in our mindset and be grace-filled body of believers and love people unconditionally. So the first thing that Paul says, we need to give up our preferences. And it gets a little harder. That's the easy one. And then we need to give up our privileges to those who are without the law as without law not being without the law towards God, but under the law towards Christ, that I might win those who are without the law. Privileges. Paul isn't saying to live an ungodly life. He's saying to go along with them to build them to Christ. Sometimes, sometimes the church and sometimes Christians are scared to get dirty, to get messy, to share our past, and to be vulnerable to those that are struggling. And Paul says this, I, I am willing to do whatever it takes to reach people for Christ. Now I'm not saying that we should go to the bar and reach people for Jesus at the bar. If you're an alcoholic or a former alcoholic, that's not a very smart move to make. But what I am saying is if somebody's struggling and somebody has a beer in their hand, we can't say, oh, I can't talk to you. What we have to do is we have to be able to walk up to somebody in spite of what they have and talk to them about the love of Jesus. We have to. Because if we think, well, you, you drink or you smoke or you chew, then you can't be part of my friendships. But what's the greatest thing is if we just say, you know what, I don't care what you do. It's not my preference. But what I want to do is I want to befriend you so I can talk to you about the Lord of Jesus Christ. So we need to give up our privileges. We are not going to give up our, we're not going to compromise the message of Jesus Christ. We are going to teach the Bible. But what we must do is we must absolutely, without a doubt, love people where they are. We're going to do whatever we can to reach people for Jesus Christ, short of sin. Our church is on a, is on a, on a road, if you would, and what are we going to do? What are we going to do? I have a passion. As your pastor, I have a passion to help those that are struggling. I have a passion to minister. I have a passion to have empathy. When somebody is crying, when somebody is hurting, that my, my goal is to come alongside them. Now, we have different goals. We have different empathies, if you would. We have different personalities. Justin, his goal is to be teaching the Bible through, verse by verse, through the entire book, the entire book which is great. Uh, I'm a topical preacher. I, I teach in series. But that doesn't mean what Justin does and what I do are wrong. It means that's his style. That's not my style. And what we have to do is we must be able to share our love for Jesus Christ. Our job is to get into their life 
get on their level and bring them to Christ. So, we have to give up our preferences. We have to give up our privileges. And then we need to give up our prerogatives. In verse 19, For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win even the more. If God will use me, I will give it up. In the 19th century, there's a South, a South America, there's an island called Suriname. It was a Dutch island. And it was a slave island. And three of the four people that you would meet on that island were slaves. There were some missionaries that went to that Dutch island. And because they were sharing the gospel and people were getting saved, that uh, the government of that island said, you can't talk to slaves. Only slaves can talk to slaves. Only whites can talk to whites. Only the privileged can talk to the privileged. So those missionaries say, well, my job is done. And one of the missionaries says, our job is never done. So what they've done, they gave, and they sold themselves on purpose into slavery for three years. And those slave owners hated these missionaries. And when they sold themselves into slavery, they were treated worse than the slaves. They were beaten beaten worse than the slaves. They were starved worse than the slaves. They got up earlier and worked later than those slaves. And they said this, I'm going to do whatever it takes to reach people for Jesus Christ. At the end, because they were slaves, they got to witness to the slaves. And they witnessed and they won those slaves and some of those slave owners to the cause of Jesus Christ. And I was thinking about in our little first world, second world country. Would we do that? Would we go all in to say those people that I need to minister to are more important than the privilege and the prerogative and the lifestyle that I have? Am I willing to sacrifice? Am I willing to go all in? Am I willing to lose my rights? Am I willing to lose my reputation? Am I willing to talk to them at all costs? These missionaries said, these guys are more important than my position. I am willing to sacrifice everything that I have for people to hear the message that I want to share. Eventually, those slave and slave owners heard the message of Jesus Christ and were changed. Changed because of Christ. And he said to them all, in other words, Jesus is talking, and he said to them all, if you desire to follow after me, you must deny yourself. You must become a slave. You must take up your cross the cross represents death. Jesus died on the cross for your sins and mine. And remember the scripture. You've been bought by the blood of Jesus. He paid the price for your sins. Carry that cross. Not around your neck. But carry that cross of death. To say, I am dead to sin. And then, if you deny yourself... And now you're dead to yourself. Then and only then can you devote yourself to Jesus. And when you go all in, you're saying, it's not about me. It's about people. It's about Christ. It's about what I can do for the cause of Jesus. Going all in means my hand wins. Whatever I have in front of me on the poker table, I'm going to shove it right to the middle. And I'm going to tell everybody in this world, my Savior beats your life. My Savior can trump your sin. My Savior can forgive any action. My Savior is the Lord Jesus Christ. I have died to myself. I take up his cross daily. Not just on Sunday. When the Bible says daily. That means Monday, Tuesday, all the way through Saturday. Sunday, it's easy to come to church. It's easy to praise. It's easy to read the Bible on Sunday because that's what Christians do. But Monday, when you go to work, 
when you go to school, can you go all in? Can you tell people at school, at work, that I'm a child of God? Will you sacrifice and deny yourself when your rights are, I have the right to do this? But Jesus said, it's not about your rights. As the body of Christ, as this church, we need to give up our preferences. Give them up. Do you like spinach? I'm gonna, it's going to be hard for me to say this. If you need me to, <laughs> I will try to eat spinach. And I hate spinach, but I love you. And loving you is more important than me not liking spinach. And if we in the church has that mindset, when somebody comes in, you may not look like me, you may not talk like me, you may have piercing in every place you could have piercing in your body. You may have sleeves of tattoos up your neck, around your arms, around your back. You know what they need? They need a church that loves them. Period. Is it your preference? Maybe not. But is it reality? Absolutely. And we can't live in a pie in the sky mindset of Christianity. We have to get down and dirty and love people, help people, and push our chips to the middle of the table. Say, Jesus, I am all in. Let's pray. Dear Father, Lord, we come before you. And Lord, we need you. This church needs you. Every church in the United States and every church in America and every church around this world needs to give up our preferences and live on our convictions and love people where they are. So Lord, be with us as we talk and as we share and as we ask you to work within our life. We ask you for that in Jesus' name. Amen.